Maybe God is trying to incarnate through every single one of us. Maybe this incarnation, instead of being one form as it's been before, maybe the situation is such today that every one of us gets to be a vehicle gets to be that through which the energy flows. So if I can acknowledge that that experience of anger is there and not push it away, not eat it or drink it or gamble or shop it away, but experience it and then see what it wants me to do, not as a reaction of breaking my knuckles in the wall, but where there's energy, there's movement. And if there's an energy of anger, and we're able to just be a vessel, then that energy can bring about movement toward righteousness. And ultimately, I mean, going back to the Bhagavad Gita, this is, this is what Krishna teaches in 700 verses, is not, I'm an advocate of violence, but Arjun, you are just a vehicle. You're a vehicle for the divine flow that needs to happen in this case to bring back Dharma, to bring back righteousness. And that's the way for it to happen. And the last piece about this is you mentioned about hatred. Hatred comes when we identify the sin with the sinner. When I identify the act with the being. And that really does burn us. And it burns us on a much more lasting way frequently than anger. Anger tends to come and go. Hatred tends to sit and fester. And the antidote to hatred is to understand that just as you are not your fears, you're not your confusion, you're not your upbringing, you're not all the stuff that we talk about every night, so is that person not. And even though this horrible act flowed through that person, It's because that's all they've got. It's like this air conditioner. What this air conditioner gives you is cold air. Feels great today. We've got a little extended summer. It shouldn't be this hot in October, but it is. The AC feels great. In January, it's not going to feel so great. But the AC can't help it. If I turn that on in January, it's still going to give me cold air. It has no ability to respond effectively and skillfully to what the situation requires because all it's got is cold air. And many of us, many of us sadly are like this based on our upbringings, based on our experience, based on our karmic package, what we've got is the emotional equivalent of cold air. We've got fear, we've got anger, we've got grabbing, we've got jealousy, we've got competition. And so that's what we give. Turn us on, that's what you get. Not because this AC intends to give me pneumonia in January. Not because it woke up in the morning and said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that one. The minute she comes near me, I'm going to give her a good case of bronchitis. But because that's all it's got. People don't wake up in the morning deciding that what they're going to do 
is commit heinous sins that are going to bring about great suffering. Even those who are doing things that we look at as terrorism, as heinous sins. If you bring them in and you say, why are you doing it? They're going to say, they've got very righteous explanations for what they are doing. To restore to restore justice, to restore this, to restore that. Read the interviews with Charles Manson. I mean, he had a whole rationale for why he was doing what he did. It's fascinating psychologically. I'm not going to go there tonight, but, but it is. And if you're into that kind of thing, it's really interesting to read the rationales given by those we label as just evil, horrible, crazy people. Every one of them thinks they're doing the right thing. It's all they've got. And what that means is that for us, if I stood too near to that AC and I caught pneumonia, okay, it's a bummer. I better get the antibiotics. I should treat myself in the hospital. I should be very sure not to stand near air conditioners anymore in the winter. But for me to hate that machine serves no one. And that's, that's really the way to think about hatred, is whatever people have done that have made us hate them, they did it because that's all they've got. Doesn't, doesn't condone the act. Doesn't mean what they did is okay. Doesn't mean I should keep standing near air conditioners in January or send all my friends in to have a party near the air conditioner in January. But it means that I don't allow hatred for the AC to ruin my life or convince myself that hating it is somehow the right thing to do. Because that just kills me. Doesn't change the air conditioner. Doesn't change my pneumonia. The key there is action versus reaction. And the ego, the ego is incredible. It can justify anything. Do not walk out of here, and I don't mean you, my or by, I mean you, the, the general you, and react to anger and then explain it away by saying, yeah, that lady said it was okay as long as I used the energy to change things. Well, I taught you a lesson, didn't I? The key, the key is freedom. And what that means is, I can't react in the moment with the anger. I have no freedom in that moment. I'm in a sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, tunnel visioned reaction. I have to stop in that moment. And I have to sit. So that I'm able to see and experience the energy. Allow the wave of it to crash over me. It'll dissipate. And what's left, what's left after the, how dare you, who the hell do you think you are? Oh my God, I can't believe it after that dissipates, because that stuff doesn't last very long, the energy that is left is the pure response, the pure human connected, alive response to that which is happening to our self in another form. Does that make sense? And that's the energy with which we act. But you have to first let all of the ego reaction dissipate. 
and then use just the energy that's pure, that's left to act.